Good morning and welcome to Tracy Tin United Methodist Church. To our morning worship, we will be doing virtual communion a little bit later in the service. So please have your bread and juice or wine ready to receive Holy Communion letter later. I'm going to mention a couple of things. We will be doing a Zoom afterglow at 11 o'clock this morning. A Zoom afterglow at 11 o'clock this morning in which we can uh, share our thoughts and our feelings about the sermon this morning. Second, I want to mention that the first Sunday in November is uh, All Saints Sunday or uh, Communion of the Saints. And I would encourage you to either place on Facebook page or email uh, Tracy Tin United Methodist Church with people that have passed in this past year that you would like for them to be remembered. And we will mention their name, ring a bell, and light a candle. So send us those names of those persons who have passed away this past year. Thank you. Now, let's begin our worship, and to begin our worship, Sandy will lead us in our morning prayer. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty, loving God, we know that you are with us wherever we gather to hear your word. We need to channel the strength and the grace in your word to feel an inner peace. Our country battles a virus that prevents us from gathering in person. 
Our politicians battle for power and cause us confusion and duress. Our communities battle with respect and justice for all, which pains our heart. We know you are the answer. We ask to tap into that wellspring and fill our souls with your answers and especially your peace. Help us to listen and to hear your truth over the turmoil of the world today. Help us to reach out to those who have not found the way and bring them into your fold. We ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. And now, our prayer of illumination. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. This morning we have Dawn reading the scriptures. This is from <clears throat> excuse me, Exodus 32. When the people saw that Moses delayed to come down from the mountain, the people gathered around Aaron and said to him, Come, make gods for us. Who shall go before us as for this Moses, the man who brought us up out of the land of Egypt? We do not know what has become of him. Aaron said to them, Take off the gold rings that are on your ears of your wives, your sons, and your daughters, and bring them to me. So all the people took off the gold rings from the ears and brought them to Aaron. He took the gold from them, formed it in a mold, and cast an image of a calf. And they said, These are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. When Aaron saw this, he built an altar before it, and Aaron made the proclamation and said, Tomorrow shall be a festival to the Lord. They rose early the next day and offered burnt offerings and thought and brought sacrifices of well-being. And the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to revel. Moses said to Aaron, What did this people do to you that you have brought so great a sin upon them? And Aaron said, Do not let the anger of my Lord burn hot. You know the people. They are bent on evil. They say to me, Make us gods who shall go before us. As for this Moses, the man who brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. So I said to them, Whoever has gold, take it off. So they gave it to me and threw it into the fire and out came this calf, the word of the Lord. This is Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. For <clears throat> Excuse me. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. And Philippians 4, verse 4 to 9. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, and with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, Whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and God of, <clears throat> the God of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord. Thank you, Don. 
Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, a world without end. Amen. Good morning. In the first uh, reading, I'll give you the shorthand version of that. Uh, Moses goes up in the mountain. Uh, the people are restless. They want a leader. Uh, and Aaron throws all the gold in the, in the fire pot. Moses comes back and said, what happened? He said, well, I don't know. I threw all this gold in this pot and out came this calf. So we started to worship this calf. That's the short end of it. The psalm is the good shepherd who leads us. And of course in Philippians, it gives us how we are to live, how our characters are to be formed. Whatever is true, whatever is pure, dwell upon these things and the peace of God, the peace of Christ that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds. And now, let's listen to what Matthew has to say. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Once more, Jesus spoke to them in parables, saying, the kingdom of heaven, all right, chose to pod. So a parable, this parable is about the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, the reign of God, the reign of God. So it's about that, so listen very carefully. Uh, may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. So the kingdom of heaven is like this wedding banquet. He sent out his servants to call all those who had invited to the wedding banquet, but they would not come. So they're all invited. You're all invited to the kingdom, to the banquet, but some of them didn't come. Again, he sent out other uh, servants saying, tell those who have been invited, look, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen, my fat calves have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Please come to the banquet. But they made light of it and went away, one to his farm, one to a business, while the rest seized his servants, mistreated them, and killed them. And then the king was enraged. He sent his troops and destroyed those murderers and burned their cities. And then he said to his servants, the wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go therefore into the main streets. In other words, go anywhere and everyone, because everyone is invited to come to the banquet. And so those servants went out into the streets and gathered all whom they found, both good and bad. So the wedding was filled with guests. But when the king came to see the guest, he noticed the man there who was not wearing a wedding robe. And he said to him, friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, bind him, hand and foot, throw him in the outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth, for many are called, but few are chosen. The Gospel of the Lord. Let us pray. Sometimes these hard truths hit us in ways in which we don't quite comprehend. But Lord, we want to be your, your kingdom kids. We want to be a part of that kingdom, and we want to respond to the invitation. And yet, as we respond to the invitation, we must be clothed properly. And to be clothed properly simply means what we heard in Exodus, what we heard in Psalms, what we heard in Philippians. And basically it's saying this, Lord, help clothe us with your love. Help clothe us with your kindness. Help clothe, clothe us with generosity. Help clothe us with joy and peace. These are the clothes that pleases our Heavenly Father. For it is in Christ's name we pray. Amen. So I want to switch gears and move over to Luke chapter 5 for a minute, which kind of explains where I'm going with this. If you haven't already uh, seen the sermon title, it's uh, the Rocky uh, Holy Story. My granddaughter told me she just watched the Rocky Horror Story, I guess in preparation for Halloween. But this is a Rocky Holy Story. And what do I mean by rock? Well, let's listen to what Luke says. He was, Jesus was standing by the, the lake, the, the Galilee lake. And people were coming and pressing him. And he said, so he got into a boat and he pressed out. And as he pressed out, he began to teach him. He sat down and began to teach him. 
and he invited the, the others who were fishers of men to, or fishers of uh, fishermen, come. And, and as he did that, he said, cast your nets on the other side. But we have been doing, Peter said, we've been doing this all night. Just do what I ask. So he did. And they caught so many fish, they didn't know what to do. The boat was filled up, so they had to call other friends to come and take some of the burden, and they shared the fish. So I want to focus on a, a moment on Peter. Peter, his name was Cephas. When, when he, he first arrives on the scene, he is Cephas, which actually means little stone little stone and Jesus calls him and here's what Peter did Lord stay away from me for I'm a man of unclean lips so, something similar to what Isaiah said in, in his uh, prophetic utterance and what that means is that Peter is repenting sh showing his remorse for his past and accepting Christ's teaching and when he did that Peter gave him a new name he named him, why well, Cephas became a new name. He named him Peter. Peter means big rock. And remember in Matthew, it says, upon this rock, I will build my church. Now, some argue that this is not about Peter. This is about Jesus. And you can have that argument if you like. But the, but the fact of the matter is this, that upon this rock, I will build my church. So Cephas is a small stone. He's about to become Peter, the rock upon which Jesus would build his church. Peter is not perfect. Peter is not, uh, he denies Jesus. Uh, God is not looking for perfect people. God is looking for people who will simply acknowledge that they need something greater than themselves, the grace of God, the grace of Jesus Christ. And so what I'm looking for I've had enough. So this is what Jesus is saying to Peter. Look, I'm not looking for, you know, religious people because I've got enough hypocrites running around. What I'm looking for is people of real faith. That is faith that is real. Now, we have to ask this question. What is real faith that works? First, faith that is real stands upon the rock and not throw rocks other people. Let me say that again. First, we stand upon the rock and not use rocks to throw at other people. When we use scripture as a weapon and a mind that is crusading mind as a rock to throw at others, we are actually doing Satan's bidding. How do I know that? Well, look at the temptation of Jesus. Satan uses scripture he uses it as a rock and he throws it at Jesus. Satan's temptation is to, to snare humanity. Temptation is to snare humanity. And when you're throwing rocks or saying things that are mean and inappropriate to other people, you're throwing rocks, you are doing Satan's bidding because that's exactly what Satan did. Now scripture for Jesus is about faithfulness to God. Faith is real, is faith working through love. So every time when Satan used scripture inappropriately as a rock throwing at Jesus, he turned that and converted it into a scripture that is faithful to God. Throwing rocks at other people is not faithful to, to God. It is faithful to the evil one. Scripture for Satan is about snaring humanity. So what's the word here? Anytime you hear anyone or yourself or myself using scripture or using language to snare other humans, to, do, to denigrate them, to subvert them, we are doing Satan's bidding. Faith that is real works through love. Faith that is real works through the power of the Spirit. Faith that is real is faithful to God and his word. For upon that rock, Jesus said, I will build my church. So what do we need to do? We need to learn how to practice what I call a crucified mind and not a crusading mind. A crucified mind is a mind that sets its 
on things above and not on things of the world. It doesn't become defensive. It doesn't become hostile when you hear something contrary, but speaks peace, speaks truth, speaks love as the good shepherd. We speak truth, and sometimes those truths are hard, that's for sure. So we have to practice crucifying our mind. When words come out of our mouth that is inappropriate, there's something in our heart that needs to be converted, needs to be transformed. And when our hearts are transformed, when our hearts are converted to God, then what comes out of our mouth is a crucified mind. Set your mind on things above. And you begin to practice what Philippians 4 said. Listen, finally, beloved, whatever is true, crucified mind. Whatever is honorable, crucified mind. Whatever is just, crucified mind. Whatever is pure, crucified mind. Whatever is pleasing, crucified mind. Whatever is commendable, crucified mind. If there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Think. Use your mind. When you think, your mind becomes crucified and out of your mouth comes rivers of living water, love and grace and kindness. Now, I'm like anyone else. I have my bad days and there are things that come out of my mouth that as, just as those words are coming, I try to, <laughs> it's, it's a little bit too late, it's, it's there. But here's the good news. We don't have to stay in that mindset. We can come back to God and say, oh Lord, I have sinned. Forgive me for saying what I said. And go and try to make amends with that other person. It's, it's okay to say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I said what I said. I should, I should not have said that. I know better. Please forgive me. Now, whether they forgive you or not is not your business. But what you've, what you've done is try to make amends for what you said or what you thought. Let God's peace rule in your hearts. Crucified mind. And then finally, we have to practice or learn how to connect our story to the gospel story through conversion and transformation. We are all like Cephas at some point in our lives. We are all like Paul at some point in our lives. We're all like these characters that we, we, we read about. They're not perfect, but the one thing they all have in common is that they have a heart for God. They have a heart for God. Even David, who sinned, had a heart for God. And God honors that. So we need to acknowledge our own story. And by acknowledging our own story, then we know exactly what needs to be connected to gospel story. Because in connecting our story to the gospel story, we discover our purpose, we discover meaning for our life, and we discover the values that we want to shape our being. We don't want the values of ensnaring humanity like Satan does. We don't want those kind of values. The values that we want represent the kingdom of God, of peace and of love and of joy. So we have to be consistent with God's call upon our life. In other words, Cephas becomes Peter and Saul becomes Paul. Once you own your story and you connect that to God's story, is like rewriting a script. You become a new creation. Listen to what Paul says in 2 Corinthians 5, 17. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. Let God rewrite your script. Cooperate with God. Uh, Co-write that script so that you could become a crucified mind and not a person who throws rocks. Jesus said, come and I will make you fishers of humanity. Now I've thought about that for a while, and one of the questions I raised was this, if we are called to be fishers of men, you know, when you think about that metaphor, fishing for fish, you catch a fish, right? And you take it out of the water, it, it's alive for a moment, but if you keep it out of the water, it's gonna die. So what is Jesus saying? I think what he's saying is this, I remember taking my grandson fishing at a, a place not far from here, and, but they had a rule and it was a sign that said, all the fish you catch, you have to throw back into the sea. You catch them alive and you toss them back in the sea. Why? Because the sea is the symbol of humanity. We're not called out of the sea. 
We are called to swim in the sea, attracting others to become disciples of Christ. Come, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Which means that we are swimming in the sea, in the presence of God, gathering other fish, so that they too could be caught alive and then sent back forth into the sea, attracting other people to the gospel of Christ. You cannot catch a fish with a rock, nor with a crucified mind. You catch a live fish, but there is a difference. You put them back in the sea to gather other fish. Amen. It is my pleasure to introduce Catherine. She will uh, do our vital connecting, something that we started new, so that people can share their witness, their testimonies, their stories, uh, how they've connected their story to the gospel story. So, Catherine. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I'm very glad to be here this morning. Someone told me that I was going to be a witness, and I said, uh-oh. Oh. Well, I'll be glad to be a go in God's witness protection plan without fear. And so today I'm going to speak to you a little bit about fear um, as it pertains to the COVID and other fears that ram run rampant for all of us. So I did a little research and fears that one of the acronyms for fear is false evidence appearing real. And I think that I've lived in a lot of false evidence. And I'm going to just focus on a recent fear that we experienced last year, about in February or the March, when the outbreak of the COVID had become really real and to the world. And Don and I were in Arizona, and my daughter lives in Ellensburg. She became very ill, and the symptoms were the same as what I had fearfully read about. High fever, tired, worn out, achy. She called her doctor and was not able to get in for a test for a few days. Finally, she was able to get a test by driving 30 miles. The results of her test came back negative, but she, still she was running a fever and she was not well. In the meantime, her tooth had become seriously infected and so she needed a dentist and she was unable to get to a dentist because of all the emergencies that everybody else was having. She finally got an appointment and during this time, I was beside myself. I had gone to a state of desolation. I wanted to rent a car and drive back in the middle of the night. Don and I talked and he was comforting and telling me that he didn't think that that might be a very good idea, that he might not see me again if, because we weren't sure about the COVID and what was, what was happening even on the road. I talked to pastor, I talked to anybody that would listen about my fears and still I prayed and I spoke to, to God and I asked God to help me, help me and listen to my fear-based uh, conversation. I asked God to guide me and help me do God's will and not mine. I prayed, oh Heavenly Father, please take care of my daughter, Renee. I love her so much. Cover her with protection, cover her with blessings. Help her be strong spiritually and comfort her. May she find comfort in your ability, God, reach and hold her. The ability to put fear aside, finally, when I reached out, was so comforting. And so I will close with today's thing, today's prayer, which says, um, where God guides, he provides, Isaiah 58, 11. So I have been able to use this example throughout my life since February and March about taking more time to ask God when I'm in a state of uh, fear or anxiety or anger or resentment. And I feel like that has been such a blessing for me. So I'm very, care very glad to be able to come today and talk to each of you about this. Thank you. Thank you, Catherine, for sharing your story. It's wonderful how you tied that to the gospel story and had the faith to sustain you through that. And your daughter's well now. Yes, I forgot to tell you. Yes, she's well. yes, she's well. That's good. That's good. Um, so this is the time in which you are invited uh, to receive Holy Communion. So I hope you have your bread and uh, wine or juice or whatever it is to, 
to be prepared for communion. And one of the ways in which we prepare for communion is to make our confession. So let us make our confession before God and one another. Let us pray. Merciful God, sometimes I don't have the exact words for how I'm feeling. I feel a mixture of stress and anxiety and frustration because of society's influence on me. I feel sadness in all the lives lost to the virus and social unrest. I question what I can do while not doing enough. And I stray from the path that Jesus laid out for me to follow. Forgive me in my spiritual frailty and lack of commitment to follow your word. Wash from me the sin that holds me back. Make me a vessel of your service for you. Make me strong in my faith. Through your Son, I pray. Amen. Let us pray. The Lord is slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love. Let us change our hearts and minds and turn to the Lord who loves us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you and I are forgiven. Amen. And because we are forgiven and reconciled people, let us offer our gifts to God. God of grace and mercy, we bring our gifts this morning, remembering that the offering you truly seek is the offering of our whole lives. Help us, we pray, to live a life that is worthy in your sight. When we struggle and stumble, help us up and put us on the path. On the advice of the Apostle Paul, may our lives be focused on whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, so that our offering may be pleasing in your eyes. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. time I hear that song, Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus, I'm reminded of the time when Peter had just denied Jesus and Jesus turned his eyes upon Peter. Jesus turned his eyes upon Peter. 
and we are invited to turn our eyes upon Jesus. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Indeed, it's good and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, God Almighty. You created the heavens and the earth. You sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to restore us, to redeem us, to renew us. We are grateful. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy, and so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we are praying, holy are you and blessed is your son Jesus. Forgive me, I skipped a spot there. That makes me human. That's one of those things where I, I wished I could get that back, but that's okay. Holy are you and blessed is your son Jesus. He invited many to his feast in your love and they denied him. And by the baptism of suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church. You delivered us from slavery to sin and made a new covenant with us by water and the Spirit. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, gave thanks to you. He broke the bread and gave the bread to his disciples and said, Take all of you, eat. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In the same manner, he took the cup and gave thanks to you and blessed the cup and gave the cup to his disciples and said, Take all of you and drink, for this is the cup of salvation. Do this in memory of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Hosanna in the highest. Pour out your spirit upon us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be the body of Christ to the world redeemed by his blood. May we be inviting all persons to share in the feast of the Lord. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at the heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. And now with the confidence of the children of God, we are bold to pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body. For we, could, we partake of the one loaf. The bread that we break, is it not the sharing of the body of Christ? And the cup of salvation, is it not the sharing in the blood of Jesus who cleanses us and renews us? Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happier are you who are called to his table. Lord, we are not worthy to receive you. Only say the word, and we shall be healed. O Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takes away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us your peace. Amen. If you have your elements, now would be the time, the body and blood of Christ, broken and shed for you. Take and eat and be nurtured in the sacrament of Holy Communion. Let us pray. 
Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Think about that. The mystery. God in Christ has given himself to us and we partake. Let us not worry about anything, but come to you in prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We come to that time in our service when we offer prayers, and so I want to offer prayers for Sally and others, not only in our congregation, but throughout uh, the virtual land. If you're, if you're watching, even though I may not see you, even though I may not know, know that I am praying for you specifically for your need. Let us pray. God, in the name of Christ, you love everyone, you care for everyone, and there are many people out there that are lonely, people that are hurting, people that are isolated, people that are confused, people who are angry. I pray that your spirit will fall upon them to comfort their hearts and minds so that they may know that the, the, the good shepherd leads us by the still waters and we drink in the waters of the living Christ that restores us. So I pray that you restore your people, that you renew your people, that you increase our capacity for faith that works through love, so that our faith is real and grounded. We give you praise and thanks and honor for visiting us today and being with us in these days and the days ahead as we navigate our way through this COVID, the political landscapes and all that's going around us. You will bring us peace if we look to you in the name of Christ. Amen. A couple of reminders. There is an afterglow immediately at 11 o'clock this morning. Uh, afterglow. And I want to remind you that if you have someone in your family or someone that you want to name that has passed away in this past year, uh, email that to me or put it on the Facebook uh, page so that we can t get that name because on the first Sunday in November is what we call All Saints Sunday or Holy uh, the Communion of Saints Sunday in which we remember those loved ones that have passed this past year and we will name them, ring a bell, and light a candle. So please send those names in so that we can uh, pray with you and pray with them and remember them as well. And now may the peace of Christ that surpasses all understanding guard your hearts and minds. And may the blessings of God Almighty in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. From my heart to your heart, until we meet again, may God's peace reign for you. Amen. Mm -hmm.